we are supposed to show that f of x is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 5. What information are we given? We're given the intercepts of f of x, which is p and t. So finding f of x should be relatively easy if we have the intercepts. We can just say that f of x is equal to a multiplied by x minus x1 multiplied by x minus x2. In place of x1 and x2, we are substituting the x intercepts. So f of x is going to be equal to a multiplied by x plus 5 multiplied by x plus 1. So f of x is equal to a multiplied by x multiplied by x, that is x squared, and then plus x plus 5x plus 5. So we have f of x being equal to a multiplied by x squared plus 6x plus 5. We just need to substitute any point on our graph except from the x-intercept to find the value of a. We can substitute w, which is our y-intercept. If we do that, we're going to have 5 being equals to a multiplied by 0 squared plus 6 multiplied by 0 plus 5. 5 is going to be equals to a multiplied by 5. It will be easy to see now that a is equals to 1. So f of x is just equals to x squared plus 6x plus 5. That is 5.1. Let's look at 5.2. In 5.2, we're supposed to calculate the coordinates of q. So look at let's look at p and q. At p, our two functions f of x and g of x they intersect. The same is true at q. The two functions intersect. So in order for us to find the value of q, we need to equate these two functions. So we can say that f of x is equal to g of x. If we do this, we're going to be able to find the x value of p and the x value of q. We already know the x value of p. It is minus 5. So we're just going to find the x value of q. f of x, that is x squared plus 6x plus 5. g of x is 2x plus 10. So let's take 2x to the left hand side together with 10. We're going to get x squared plus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. So we just need to factorize this. Which two numbers do we multiply and get minus 5? But when we add them, we get 4. That is 5 and minus 1. So we're going to have x plus 5 multiplied by x minus 1 being equal to 0. So x is equal to minus 5 or x is equal to 1. But we know that at x is equal to minus 5, this is where we have the x coordinate of p. So x is equal to 1 must be the x coordinate of q. So now we just need to substitute x is equal to 1 in either f of x or g of x to find the y value of q. So let's substitute it into g of x. So g of 1 will be equal to 2 multiplied by 1 plus 10, which is equal to 12. So the coordinates of q, we have 1 as our x value and 12 as our y value. That is how we're supposed to answer that question. Now we're supposed to show that in 5.3, we're supposed to show that f of x is not equal to minus 5 for all values of x. Let's try showing that it is actually equal to minus 5. And in failing to show that it is equal to minus 5, we would have sort of proved that it is not equal to minus 5. So 5.3 f of x is equal to minus 5, right? So what is f of x? That is x squared plus 6x plus being equals to minus 5. So we're going to have x squared plus 6x plus 10 being equals to 0. 
in order to factorize this, we need the aid of the quadratic formula. So x is equals to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, everything divided by 2a. So there's no way issues are going to arise with 2a or minus b. What we need to focus on is square root of b squared minus 4ac. If that number is negative and we cannot take the square root of a negative number, then it would simply imply that f of x can never, can never be equal to minus 5. So let's go ahead and compute that. So the square root of b squared, uh, what is b? b is 6 in our instance, right? So 6 squared, that is 36 minus 4ac. a is 1, c is 10. So minus 40, essentially. As you can see now, we have square root of minus 4. And we cannot compute square root of minus 4. So f of x can never be equal to minus 5. Now we know for sure. Let's move to the following equation. 5.4. Consider point R when SR is at its maximum in the interval x is between x at P and x at Q. And then let's do the following, 5.4.1, the gradient of the tangent to F at R, the gradient of the tangent to F at R. So let's look at this statement, this opening statement, and see if it can help us to find the gradient of the tangent to F at R. So let's consider point R. Point R is right here. And then when SR is at its maximum in the interval, X is between uh, X of P and somewhere here, X of Q. And determine the gradient of the tangent to F at R. So they're saying that SR is a maximum. It is the maximum distance between X of P and X of Q. So what we can actually do, we can find an equation uh, for the distance between the two graphs. The graph that is above is g of x, right? And the graph below is f of x. So we can say g of x minus f of x. And we're going to have an equation uh, for the distance here. After finding the equation for that distance, we can derivate it and equate to 0 in order to find the x value for which it is a maximum. And that will be the x value at r. So that will look something like the following. So we're going to have the distance being equals to g of x minus f of x. g of x, that is 2x plus 10 minus f of x, which is x squared plus 6x plus 5. So we're going to have 2x minus 6x. So we have minus 4x and then 10 minus 5 plus 5 minus x squared. This is our distance. Now let's go ahead and derivate. If we do that, we're going to have minus 4 minus 2x. And then we are equating to 0 in order to find the x value for which that distance is a maximum, which will be the x value of r and the x value of s. If we take minus 4 to the other side, we're going to get 4 is equal to minus 2x. We divide both sides by minus 2, we get minus 2 is equal to x. So this is the x value at point R. And we want the tangent at R. So if we have the x value, what we can do is derivate uh, f of x and then equate that x value. In derivating f of x, we're going to get 2x plus 6. When we substitute minus 2, we're going to get 2 multiplied by minus 2 plus 6. This will give you 2. So the gradient at R when X is equal to minus 2 is 2. We have answered the first question. Now let's go ahead and answer the question that follows. Uh, it is saying, let's find the equation of the tangent to F at R. So the equation of a tangent, it is a straight line. We're going to have y is equal to mx plus c. m is the gradient, so y is equal to 2x plus c. 
we need to substitute point r into this equation so that we can find the value of c for point r we have x of r which is equals to minus 2 so we can say f of minus 2 in order to find the y value at r so we're going to have minus 2 squared plus 6x not 6x but 6 uh, multiplied by minus 2 plus 5 so minus 2 squared that is 4 6 multiplied by minus 2 minus 12 so we have minus 8 plus 5 which will be minus 3 the coordinates of r we have minus 2 and minus 3 so if we equate it into our equation we're going to get minus 3 meaning equals to 2 multiplied by minus 2 plus c so minus 3 is equals to minus 4 plus c so 1 is equals to c then y will be equals to what is the gradient 2 x 2 so we're going to have 2x plus 1 being the equation of our tangent the last equation 5.5 consider x being greater than x at p and then for which values of x is g of x minus the inverse greater than 15 right so g of x is equals to 2x plus 10 let's see if we can find g inverse so in order to find g inverse we need to swap x and y and solve for y if we do that we're gonna have something like the following 2y plus 10 so 2y is equals to x minus 10 so y is equals to a half x minus 5 this is g inverse so now we're looking for g of x minus g inverse being greater than 15 so let's go ahead and substitute we're going to have 2x plus 10 minus a half x minus 5 being greater than 15 so 2x minus a half x that will be 3 divided by 2x and then 10 minus minus 15 that will be plus 15 being greater than 15 so we can take 15 to the right hand side we're going to have 3 divided by 2x being greater than 0 15 minus 15 is 0 so if we divide both sides by 3 divided by 2 then our answer is just x is greater than 0